This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, it's Alex, and it's the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight if we get everything going right. Look at that. Look at that. What happens is we do two of these at a time. So to make it look like it's next week, you know, he puts a hat on. Or takes a hat off. And I could take my hat off. Oh, no, that's, that's going to blind people. Um, yeah, that looks. I love that hat. If I, if I ever come right, up to your pl- place, you're not, you're not going to be able to find that hat after I leave. You know. Is that right? Yeah, yeah that's a great hat. That's, what's it called, a pork pie again? Pork pie. Pork pie, yeah. Don't that's, know why. That's Stephen Kravitz. Uh, he, oh, hey. He's hey, a, Alex. He's a comic. But he's not working as one right now. When when's the last time you worked as a comic? Two years ago. So how how often do you have to do comedy in order to still say you're a comic? Well, I'm still a comic. <laughs> I'm just not working. Not working. An out of work comic. A lot of comics were out of work during COVID. <clears throat> okay. Now what? Now you're also an actor, right? When's the last time you acted? These are long pauses, by the way. Probably five years ago, six okay. years ago. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, but you're still an actor. You still have your SAG card, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still pay my dues. Still pay your dues. You don't have to pay much, though, because you haven't made money. Yeah. Right. But, uh, yeah, I always maintained my after, which then became SAG after. Uh, so you still have your card? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now I'm, <laughs> get this, I'm a senior performer, and therefore I don't pay dues. Oh, really? I should call them. You know something? You might actually be considered a senior performer, but I don't know. I don't know when that senior performer status starts. I think it started for me at 75, but I'm not sure. 75, not 65. I, I'm not sure, but I don't think it was 65. Hmm. I think I kept paying. Even though I didn't work after jobs, I kept that card going. I wanted it, right. you know? It was, I worked hard to get it. You work, yeah, you work hard to get it. And, uh, you know, I mean, I first got it when I came to New York. Uh, and I had to join after, you know, to work at the radio station I was at. Right. So that's how I got my card. You know, once I got it, I want, I, to me, that was a, a point of pride. You know, it meant that I had made it in my profession. And I, I, oh, wait a minute, maybe, maybe my first SAG card was in Chicago. Maybe not. I can't remember. Anyway. No, my card I got from the uh, Clint Eastwood show. Right. Clint Eastwood movie. Clint Eastwood show. No, and the, but, like but, it was a song and dance number. No, but you know something? They do call them shows, don't they? Yeah. What was the last show you worked on? Oh, I worked on, uh, you know, Dirty Harry or whatever. What was it? Sud- right. Sudden Impact? Yes. Yeah. Where'd you go? I lost you. Really? Can you see me? I can see you fine. Yeah. yeah I can't see you anymore. I lost. I lost. Hang on. Hmm. Oh, there you are. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. You're back. Yeah. Isn't the technique? I don't know. I, don't know how I lost you. Well, how did you get rid of me? I don't know. Oh, you probably just clicked something and it did away with my picture or something. Right. Like that. It came up with the the the, uh, the uh, website you come to when you come to the Zoom page, you know, and you click on Open Meeting. Yeah. That's the page it came on to. Yeah. 
I, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, something like that. But anyway, you got me again, so that's good. Right. That's good. Not that you have to see me. All you have to do is hear me, but... Right, it but would, it's better to see you when, I, when I'm, we're doing it. It would then annoy you for the next 20 minutes why you couldn't see me. Yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it would make it crazy. Same thing My happened. name is not Steve and Bubbles, Bubbles Kravitz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bubs. Oh yeah, Bubs. I talked to him yesterday. Oh yeah, how's he doing? Yeah, he's doing fine. You know, Bubs is Bubs. You know, uh, he we. You know what happens? Here's the problem with getting older. That when you and I we were in our you were in your maybe thirties and I'd hit fifty or something like that. I don't know. Right. We would get together. We would talk. It was about like uh, been uh, having sex with anybody recently. Yeah, recently. Yeah, no kidding. Oh yeah, what was it like? Oh her. Oh she's hot. You know. Right, 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 right. right. That, that was our discussion. Or maybe, maybe. Hey, you worked any good gigs lately? Right. You know. Um, oh hey, how did that movie go for you? Right. Now what is it? Uh, Bubs, how's your hernia doing? <laughs> Bubs, how's your cataracts doing? You know, with Has you... Bubs got cataracts? Huh? Yeah, he's got cataract. Got a, got, has a cataract. And he has what a... I think he has, he has a Pontiac, too. No, uh, he has a... Good night. <laughs> he, has, he, has a, he has a cataract in one of his eyes. Yeah. Which is a simple operation, you know. Right. It didn't used to be, but it is now. And uh, he, uh, you know, he, he, he was going to go have it done. Then they called him up and said, the doctor isn't available. You know, you get all jazzed up, you know, hey, they're going to they're gonna cut into my eye. And you worry about it and everything. And the day comes and they say, sorry, can't see you. So, so they do it as an outpatient procedure? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's an outpatient. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if you, you've never had to have it, right? No. I've had it in both eyes. It's just, you're, 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 you, get, you get kind of what seems to be a fogginess in one of your pupils, in the middle of your eye. Right. Uh, and uh, that's a cataract. You just simply have to go in and replace the lens. In fact, they replaced the one God gave you with an artificial lens that works better than the one God gave you. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I think God can be replaced. I honestly believe he can be replaced because we have all the replacement parts and they work better than the ones that he gave us. I mean, look, people have a heart and the heart goes out on them and they got to get a pump and but they were, that's going to work better than the heart that we were given because that one's going to wear out. The old new right. one isn't, right? Right. No, you're right. Yeah. I'll tell you what I saw today. You know what? I Ever since I was a kid, my great joy in life was thinking about space and about space travel. I mean, when I was a kid, I read all the science fiction books. And then when I was growing up, uh, all of a sudden Sputnik happened with the Russians. And then we were sending up our stuff. And then... They were sending up some people, and then we were sending up some people, and I was all involved in this. I, I figured that in my lifetime, hell, we're, we're going to have a colony on Mars, right? Right. Well, that never happened because we got lazy and because Americans went, oh, well, we have more problems here on Earth. Why do we want to go to the moon? Maybe so you can get off the Earth where there are problems. But anyway. Right. I've been into this thing all my life. And what I resent more than anything else is that we will probably get to Mars after I die. I don't think I'll live long enough to see us land on Mars. I probably will live long enough to see us land on the moon and to start colonies up there. Well, um, I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the current uh, uh, time frame is 2024. For, the, for a colony. To start a colony, yeah. Maybe 2025. But it, now, why can't, they, why can't they land the space shuttle on the moon? 
Well, that's a good question. Number one, we don't have any space shuttles left. Right. Why did we get rid of that? That was a good program. Well, they were getting pretty old. you got to realize those things were 30 years old. Oh, yeah. Oh, they were really old. You know, you get rid of a car before that. You know. Yeah, no kidding. You know, but I mean, it, it was a, a wonderful. Uh, you know, I I look forward to this, and I'm just not going to see it now because. But I think the reason we're doing it now is we have the ability to do it cheaper, faster, more accurately. You know, we have all the GPS technology. You know, the fact that we send up a two-stage rocket and the first stage comes back and lands on this platform out in the ocean. Uh, right. You know, right on target. I mean, it just because we have GPS, we have all these other things that allow it to to land there. And I think it, Musk with his SpaceX has sent up something like 65 rockets and return every single second stage to the pla oh, wow. to the platform. Yeah. So we've gotten the technology to be able to do that, you know. So today, uh, when, when we're recording this, it was a couple of weeks ago, when people are listening to this, uh, I watched them send up the latest crew for the space station. And there are four people on the crew. I mean, four people in there. They can actually fit five, I think. But they had four in there. And they're sending four people up to the space. And I watched this thing take off, and it just is so wonderful to watch. I mean... This thing was straight as an arrow, precision right. working perfectly, you know. And uh, then I found out from Marjorie, I didn't know this, that of the four, there was like, I think there was a Japanese guy there, some Japanese crewman from Japan, okay, that they were putting up to go to the space station. And uh -huh. because they don't have, they don't want to do it, they don't want to spend the money, a Russian we sent up there. And I'm thinking to myself... Oh, is that right? Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, aren't we arguing with the Russians right now? I mean, what are we doing sending them up on our dime to the space station? You know, but there's a Russian woman on that crew. So uh, they're all going to the space station. However, they have to spend 29 hours in this capsule before they can get into the space station. Why is that? Uh, because it takes that long to get there. You know. Well, I mean, there you know there are toll roads and you have to pay money and you know. No, uh, it, it, I think it's just because they have to rotate so many times and get up to there. I don't know why twenty nine hours. I don't know why they can't get there in three and a half minutes. You know, but they right. they don't. And then they 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 go to the space station. And then they'll be there for anywhere from three to six months. Oh yeah. Easily. Yeah. So three to six months is, uh, is uh, you know, quite a bit of time to spend on this tube that is like, I think, 30 years old now, 20 years old? Oh, it's got to be at least 20. Yeah, yeah, the, the space station. is. I think it's at least 20. And uh, it's got to be pretty rank in there by now. What do you think? Yeah, huh? when it's brand new, it's got that brand new space station smell, you know? But then when you kind of get up there, uh, after 20 years, uh, yeah, enough people are taking dumps up there, and uh, <laughs> and I wonder what they do with the, with the, uh, I gotta blow my nose again. Oh boy. I can sure tell it's winter because my sinuses are uh, acting up. Anyway, uh, they um, uh, where, where was I? Was at this? Oh yeah, they you know they, I don't know what they do with the poop. Nobody has ever answered that one. I mean, they just fling it out into space. Probably. They kind of have some way they re repurpose it or something because I repurpose it into what modeling clay. <laughs> Well, maybe that's a good idea. You know? <laughs> uh, or either that, or maybe maybe we should send some chimps up there, and they just throw it at each other. There you, you know, go. You know, 
But anyway, they, they uh, I just don't know what, they, nobody ever says what they do with the poop. You know, they've already done things on how the toilets work and so on and so forth. But, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, I mean, how much, how much, it, that thing's been up there 20 years. How much poop has been eliminated in that time and what do we do right. with it? Do we take it back in baggies when we come back to Earth? <laughs> and say, well, uh, here's our uh, here's our spaceship. And by the way, uh, throw the poop out first. Okay, we want to make sure the poop's going to be okay. But I mean, what do they do with it? That's a good question. I'm going to have to look that up. These are the things that keep me awake at night. So. That's like I, I wonder, like when there was like armies, marching armies. Mm -hmm. Where did they all go to the bathroom? Well, I mean, yeah, you think about the Russians and the Ukraine. No, I'm, I'm talking about like when they used to be... Um, just out in the, tr field. the trenches. The, yeah, the trenches. I'm sure you do, just dump, it probably said, over there at the very end of the trench is the place where you poop. And everybody probably. would go and poop at the end of the trench and then they'd come back. Probably. Yeah. And, and and you probably pee the, the, over there too. I, you don't want to go to that part of the trench very often. No, you don't. That was in World War One. Now in World War Two. How did they went in their helmet? I don't know. That's a good question. It's a very good question. These are questions we never had answered during World War Two. <laughs> but only you would ask that question. You know. So, but the space, uh, do you, are you interested in the space thing at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Because a lot of people I talk to go, oh, I don't care about it. I don't care about it. You know, and I'm going, how can you not care about something which is our destiny? Right. Our destiny isn't to stay here. God knows we haven't taken good enough care of this planet anyway. It's starting to regurgitate itself. Okay. Well, it's just starting to get rid of a lot of us. I mean, you don't think all these hurricanes is a form of Earth regurgitating? Right. You, know? you don't think the forest fires in California is regurgitating or that getting hotter than it usually gets isn't regurgitating? Right. You know, the Earth is saying, hey, I'm sick and tired of the way you've treated me. And right. Well, I, and I'm pissed. And I'm pissed and I'm going to get even with you, you know? And if worse comes to worse, what happens is you get um, a, um, uh, a situation in which the Earth, because of pollution and so on, and global warming and so on, suddenly brings on another ice age. And what an ice age does is it simply cores off, peels off a, a, a layer of the Earth and right. cleans, it, cleans it all up and it's back to a new Earth again. You know? Well, we, we might be bringing on another ice age, in which case we're not going to survive. Cockroaches uh -oh. are. Cockroaches will, but we won't. Right. Cockroaches can survive anything. Right. Even Trump. You know, so. I Trump, mean, Trump, let's not get into that. Oh, jeez. I, yeah, I just, I, I don't, I, here's what I don't understand. You just... You, you use your comedic wit to explain this to me. You got a guy in Georgia named Herschel Walker. You familiar right. with Herschel Walker? I, I, know, I know of him, and I know this. What's going? Where you going with? He was twice running on a he was, no abortion yeah, platform. He was twice named the stupidest man on planet Earth. So uh, you know, he's just this absolute utter moron who was, is very much against abortion and doesn't believe that you should can get an abortion even if the mother's health or the fact the child might be born, you know. With problems. With three arms, right? He does it even in those cases. And yet he went out 10 years ago and paid for a woman's abortion. Right. You know, uh, I, and, and I'm thinking to myself, now, it looks like, well, maybe there's a, a, an ability he has to win this race. He's within striking distance of his opponent. And you're going, 
who would vote for this guy? He right. can't put a simple sentence together. You know, and he's, got, he's got four kids from four different women. But, and he never had anything to do with any of the kids. Right. So, I mean, you're, you're a very moral Republican because they're supposed to be for morality and family values, right? Right. And then you vote for this guy? How does that happen? You know? And, and I guess it's the same answer of why we got Trump as president. How, do, how did you vote for this guy? I still, I still am in denial that he was president. Well, I think I'm most still people. In denial. Do you know what, how you can tell the denial really exists? When I tune into the news, some most of the time they call him Mr. Trump. Right. They don't call him President Trump. And you know, hey, it's President Carter, it's President Bush, it's President Clinton, it's Mr. Trump. You know, they don't even. There are people who just want to deny that he ever was president. Right. You know, well, how, what kind of country do we live in where these people can get elected? I mean, by any rational thought, although we may not be talking about rational people who vote, you know? No, I don't think we are. I mean, I don't know how any rational person can support him. Well, I mean, you got all these Republicans who are sitting around saying, yep, yep, the election was fixed, yep. Oh, and they, and they want to ban abortion throughout the country. Well, they did. I mean, they didn't ban it. What happened was the Supreme Court reversed Roe v. Wade. Right, Roe, and Roe now v. it's up Wade. to each, each individual state to figure out what they're going to do. Now, like if you live in California, no problem. If you live right, in New you York, live in Massachusetts, no problem. New York, no problem. You know, but if you live in Texas, you got a, you got a problem. You got an issue. You got to travel to California, right? You know, and if you're poor, you, you know, you can't travel to California. You know, and and if you're rich enough, I guess you can find a doctor in these areas who will say, well, you know what you need because you've got a bad situation. You need D and C. That's the same. What's that? Di di dilation and curatage, I think it's called. And what it is, they simply scoop the baby out. <laughs> That's what happens. You know, they clean out your womb, as it were. So, as it were. As it were. You know, so, I mean, it's really, it's it's a, um, uh, uh, it, it's terrible. Yeah, but they're not, the, those people, they're not pro-life, they're pro-birth. They're pro-birth. They don't, they don't really care what happens to the baby after it's born. Well, they're anti-people. They're anti-person. You know, I mean, the, the, the life, the well-being of the mother and her decision should be paramount over anything else. That's right. And, it, and, and that's, that's not taken into consideration. You don't have that right. It's the right of a little zygote, a little pea that's in your womb to survive. Right. You know, and here... You know, I think that the, the question is, when is it a viable human being? And I don't think it's a viable human being till it comes out of the womb. You know, I'd be against you bopping it over the head as it comes out of the womb to try and kill it, yes. But, you know, while it's in the womb, also, also I, believe, I believe Jews believe that as long as the baby uh, is in the mother, it is part of the mother. It is not a, a sentient human being. And the mother can do anything with it she wants to. That's a funny image, the baby coming out and you're bopping it on the head. You, well, yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't do that. That's not right, I would be against that, okay? <laughs> That is just such a funny image. <laughs> yeah, right. That is just such a funny image. Now, I do I, I do believe in the case of certain people like Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, uh, DeSantis down in Florida. I do oh, he's, he's a piece of work, yeah, huh? I, I do believe in retroactive abortion. Yeah. In which, well. in, in which we can abort the person after they're born years later. You know, it can be seven. Yeah, any time we choose. Any time we choose. 
just because they're disgusting, horrible human beings. It's amazing. It's just amazing. But anyway, this is the world we live in. Aren't you happy with it? Hey, we're heading with Putin. We're heading towards a nuclear war. Well, that's another thing altogether. He's gone bonkers. So. Right. Hey, listen, we've run out of time again. Isn't it amazing? The time flies when we're having fun. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Thank you very much, Steve, and we'll talk to you again next week. All right, Alex. Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was uh, Stephen Kravitz, and uh, we're sorry that if you watch the very beginning of the show, if it went off and then we started all over again, but I had to reboot a element here uh, because I have this thing, it's called Stream Deck, and it, uh, it, uh, I, when I push buttons, it does things like that and like that, and then I could start the opening. Thing. This is Gabnet. Uh, the great yeah, okay. It's, uh, anyway, you get what I'm saying, okay? So I can do all those things with it, all right, which is terrific. Uh, the only thing is, they when I got this new one, and uh, it it uh, it doesn't always. When I switch it, it doesn't switch something, and I have to reboot the the program that does the switching. Okay, and sometimes I have to do it twice until it finally works. Well, tonight I forgot to check to make sure it was working, and it wasn't. Sometimes, most of the time, it works. And then sometimes it decides not to. So I, uh, I did that, and um, that's what happened. So I had to literally close down the whole piece of equipment and start over again. And I think it just picked up doing the, uh, uh, I, in fact, I can look here and see, uh, see if it, uh, if it uh, uh, did, uh, did what it's supposed to do here. Uh, if we have our uh, pictures going here. Yeah, yeah, it, it looks like we're, uh, like we're okay. Yep, yep, okay, we're going out live. I imagine, I think, yeah, no, no, it's going, the stream is going and everything, so we're fine. Okay, all righty. I will, and uh, if, if you are watching this, uh, watching the, the replay of the show, uh, and you hear it start and stop and go again, that's what happened. I'll probably correct that tomorrow when I can uh, edit the thing out. And then uh, I had to start all over again recording the actual show. It, it's hard to explain this whole process, uh, but it uh, after a while it makes me just wonder why the hell I'm, again, why the hell I do this. I just, uh, I don't understand it. Okay, well, anyway, it is time for us to... Go Sorry. and meet with our uh, our people out there. Who are, oh, oh, uh, yeah, um, Jeff's on the phone, so I won't go to things yet. Uh, oh, anyway, we're going to go to our what meager citizen panel we have here. Uh, uh, two, th I'm, I'm thinking of quitting Thursday nights. You know, wait, wait a minute, you got that down there? Okay, Jeff. Uh, because look, this is what we get on Thursday nights. Two, two, two people. No, nah. <clears throat> no, they won't. And meet with our. Uh, no, no, and Jeff's got to uh, quit his. Just, just kill your browser, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kicking you. Just go to your browser and just click it off. Get rid of it. I did. Oh, okay. You're fine <laughs> now. Sorry. All right. All right. Okay. Well, you guys hold a conversation. I don't know. I have nothing to say. It's your turn to sing, Jeff. I know. I'm okay now. Yeah. yeah. How are you guys? Yeah. So. I was watching uh, my Yankees lose. Lose to who? To uh, the people in uh, Houston. Houston, the Astros. Yeah. Yeah. I was down there, I think, in about the second year, third year at the Astros were a team out of Houston. Was in that fancy uh, new building that they had? Well, the, not the new one. No, I mean, that was the Astrodome. Actually, oh, the first uh, year they played it, 
they played it out in a field somewhere, and I don't know if you've ever been to Houston, but the humidity is hellacious, just hellacious. And um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's unrelenting. So nobody would go to the games. That's why they built the Astrodome, an indoor air-conditioned park. You can close it or open it. Yeah, but no, no, you couldn't open it. That one you yeah, couldn't now open. open. Not the new one they open. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I still don't see how they can with the humidity and you. The humidity you, you can't can't keep a crease in your pants for like eight, ten months out of the year. So I don't know when they play and they can have that top off. But man. You need that that air conditioning. God, I wouldn't want to work there. You went. You go from your air conditioned job to your air conditioned car to your air conditioned home out to the air conditioned ballpark or the air conditioned movie theater, and uh, you only spend a few moments outdoors. Yeah. So, hmm. and yet the people are still jog in that city. <laughs> That's the part that gets to me. Those wonderful health nuts, ladies and gentlemen. You were talking about Steve with Steve Kravitz about, excuse me, Trump not being the real president. There's a movement going on in San Francisco. When anybody is interviewed by the media, they're <laughs> going to say he was never president. It's fake news. Well, you see, the thing is about, about Trump, which is interesting, is... Uh, when someone has been president of the United States, how do you refer to them? Mr. President. Mr. Even if they're a former president, like when I interviewed Jimmy Carter, uh, I, uh, I, and it was a great thrill for me to call him Mr. President, sure. you know, or in my ca in case, my friend the governor here, Mr. Go you know, governor so-and-so. Even though I know Patterson, I know him personally, uh, I always refer to him as the governor. You know, even if I, I answer, uh, I answered the phone once by saying hi, blah blah blah, and um, I I then, I then felt bad about it because I hey, hey, hello governor, you know, and that's what you do, but yeah. nobody refers to Donald Trump on television anywhere else as President Trump, they refer to him as Mr. Trump. Have, have you noticed that? No, your, your volume is actually way down. Oh, I st look at this. See, here's another place where I screwed up, ladies and gentlemen. You look fine. No, you, you, you can't see it. But if everybody's out there, they're going, what is Phil Meyer's name doing there? That's from last night, folks. You know, I just, uh, I just screw up uh, largely here. Uh, actually, it should be like this. It was an, It's the wrong one. There we go. I don't think anybody cares. I think they care about that you're you're on the show. I don't think they care about the minor little. Things. Well, I I, I really am I'm kind of out of it tonight. I'm a little lightheaded and everything. I don't. I don't know what's wrong with me. I haven't figured it out. I think it's boredom. I think it's being in the house all the time, not going out, not being able to go mm -hmm. anywhere. You know. Yep. That applies to me too. Yeah, and and I think that's why I feel you know if I if I got out more I'd have more energy. Yeah. You know, like I had a lot of energy doing the show last night, and I went out and walked a mile yesterday. So that yeah. kind of you know that that's the answer probably. Hmm. I get on a bicycle. You get on a bicycle? Yeah. Yeah, I used to bicycle a lot. Yeah. You know. It's a little cold today, though. Huh? It was a little cold. A little cold? Turn the heater up. No, actually, I got a bike downstairs. Right. Oh, outside bicycle. And inside. Well, yeah. 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 Well, I have a... You can go anywhere, but just... Yeah. I have a stationary bike. I mean, it isn't meant to be, but it, I never use it, so... I have a life cycle, and I never use it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, here's Brian Neary, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Uh, Brian uh, comes on early because uh, Bill's not here. Wait, 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 wait. Tur, tur, it, there you go. All right. No, oh, there, there you I, go. Mm -hmm. Better? Yeah. yeah, it should go to portrait mode, but yours doesn't. It's a phone, isn't it? Yeah, but is that bad? Uh, there yeah. we go. Perfect. Ah. Yeah. What, are you do what are you doing? 
scotch tape? It's uh, my monster's birthday tomorrow, so I have to do all the little bags for their hey, friends. Not, oh, oh, sorry, she's right here. It's Adrian's birthday tomorrow. So I make these, you know, all the kids, they make little bags for their classmates. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. Wow. There we go. You know, I noticed last night when I was when I was, you know, posting the show to YouTube, I have you have to answer some questions. And one of the questions I never asked answered: Are there any kids on your show? Kids under five or something like that, under six or under eight or. And and uh, I I wonder why they asked that question because I've never said yes. And how often has Adrian been on? Yeah. Now it's Adrian's birthday tomorrow. Yeah, come over here. Hi. Oh wait a minute. Now I I think I as long as we don't exploit her, we're okay. Hi. Hi. How you doing? God, every time I see her, she gets older. Next time I know next time I see her, she can be an old hag. <laughs> you know. Anyway. Uh, Uncle Alex just sent you a nice birthday present in the form of a check. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh but um um. <laughs> she she is remember. such a ham. I know. You know? Even though I'm not ready. Now, how old is she going to be tomorrow? Six? It'll be seven. Seven? God. Yeah. And when did you, how old was she? I think I asked this last night when she first appeared on our program when she was three or four? Four. Four. Four, because it's three years ago. Yeah, so four. Boy, she just keep. She keeps getting well. They, they, you keep getting older, you know. Yeah. So what are you? What are you making? Little little nut it's cups. It's a bag and with a Kit Kat with some molding clay with some uh, night glow things for Halloween. So when they walk around, mm -hmm. stickers, a pencil, mm -hmm. and then she has her her special friends that have like a little stuffed animal. And, and her really special friend who you're giving a car to. So that's uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, Charlene. Oh, I just want to say, Alex, when you have a kid's birthday party, I thought they would call that like a favor, like all the kids get it. But he was saying Halloween. Maybe I have the wrong, you know, because you said she, had, she did they, get big. She's getting yeah, they big. All, yeah, they also do it to their during the school day. So then uh, they, yeah. if it's a birthday, they bring a bunch for all their classmates. When, when my son was in school, I used to have goodie bags. You call it a goodie yeah. bag. Yeah, exactly. All the kids, right? So how many kids are coming to the party? No, it's just her classmates are 25, 25 kids. So no. you got to make one of those, for uh, 25 what? of those? Yeah, 20, actually 24. Yeah, 24. I'm being, you're I'm a company ball cap them. in each one. We're going to put them in a bag. Go get one of the white bags. Mm. So, and then she has her special friend she's giving a special bag to, right? Mm -hmm. See, at at, uh, at uh, uh, things cool. like the Emmys and so on, everybody who is is, is there uh, to get an award or whatever gets what's called a, a swag bag, and and in it they have sometimes these bags were worth like two hundred fifty thousand dollars because oh, like, yeah. the bag was made by Gucci and inside oh, you yeah. had this and that and they they got so expensive. I think the various organizations said no more. You know that's ridiculous. You know, a friend of mine said they have like, like fifty thousand dollars off your next Porsche at Porsche of Los Angeles or something. Really? In those bags? Well, two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, who wants who wants a Porsche? Would you do you want a Porsche, uh, Brian? Uh, a brand new one for free, yes. Yeah, okay, <laughs> a brand new one for free, yeah. Well, uh, a friend has one, and I've sat in it, and it's they, it's really nice. But yeah, you know, but I, I don't care for them because you can't really tell what year they are. They all look the same. Yeah, they all look the same. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this though: Is it pronounced Porsche or Porsche? Mm. <laughs> I think it's Porsche. I think it's Porsche. I always heard it as Porsche. Porsche. I think if you try to be cool, it's Porsche. Oh, I see. Okay. That's yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> but they say, like, this is a Porsche Car Carrera, right? And I can't tell that from one of the other ones. Yeah, that's why I don't care for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like seeing, I like, like, the old cars. You can tell the different years and the different makes. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Everything looks the same. There's, there's a little kid coming into our picture. Where is she? Oh, Adrian? 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 Yeah, she's right. Huh? <laughs> Everything you say, a seven-year-old will correct you to make sure you're correct. Everything I say, she'll correct? I just said she's running around, and she says, no, I'm not. Mm. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Adrian is standing still. I'm hoping that Adrian, if she could vote, would not vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> Why do you always bring that up? Why do we even talk about the man? Mm. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so who 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 who's the cutest kid in her class? Me. Of course. <laughs> I knew I knew that would happen. Oh boy. Uh, Do you yeah. have a boyfriend? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, that she's at the age now where it's maybe. Yeah, yeah. I thought. When we were kids, they had cooties. Do you know that boys have cooties? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they love cooties. Yeah. Exactly. They love cooties. I, no, she said, and I have cooties. Yes, I have cooties. So don't touch me. Okay. Did you ever make a cootie catcher? No, I it, it was this thing that. they did with paper, and do you know what I'm talking about? Charlene knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, that thing, yeah. Yeah, and what you would do, it, it, you'd fold it a certain way, and then you could put your four fingers in it, and then it opened up, right? And what you did is you put pictures of bugs inside, so you go, mm, cootie catcher. What? Why did you say, because she's going to go do it now? No, 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 no. She's... She's playing with the cat. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the four thing, and you, yeah, you yeah. did the color, the color, and a number or something like that, and then it came out with something. Yeah, but then you could also put bugs in there, you know, pictures of bugs. And then you, <laughs> it's a cootie catcher. Okay, well. Never did that. That was many, 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 many years ago. I started thinking about that today, you know. Uh, you start, at my age, you start thinking about that. Like, did all these years pass? And and I was like that. I was like at thirteen. This is how I was. Or at you know five. This is how I was. And and that's so many years ago. It's ridiculous, you know. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Some some friends I saw over the over the weekend. And it's like yeah, we've been friends like 30, 30 years. Like when we were 21, we, we started hanging out. So, like, wow, 30 years. That seems like a lot. I think I've known, let's see here. I've known Jack Bishop since Houston, Texas in 1967. Oh, yeah. That's How many 50, years ago? How many years ago is that? 55 years because my birthday is coming up and I was born in 1967. Yeah, 55. I, was, I, I met him first. When when you were born, I guess, huh? That's yes. scary. All right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so how many of those do you have to do? On my last few. You're on your last few. Twenty-four. Can I can I ask why the wife isn't helping? She's on her phone. What what did she say? She's on her phone. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Oh boy, you're, you're, isn't he a good dad, Adrian? Yeah. Oh, that was that was exciting. That was a, that was a <laughs> that was a meaningful answer. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, she knows. Yeah. Well, if you know, he he's better. He's a, better than other daddies. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's always situations, but man, two of my friends were like that. Like, we we were all hanging out, and they got married when they were like mm -hmm. 40, and then mm -hmm. they got divorced like within five months. Two of my friends really, and they had a kid, and they, had a kid, and they got divorced right away. Yeah. And so, I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, mm -hmm. like what you say? Uh, what's his name? How he said at the end of life? Like, what was that all about? 
That's what I told those guys. What was that all about? Why, why would you stay asleep? Like Watch me give Brian never-ending grief. Um, so when are you going to tell her that she was adopted? Oh, man, that's cool. <laughs> 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 so cool. <laughs> Uncle Alex is a piece of poo-poo. He, I what? What did I do? You're a piece of poo-poo. Oh, I'm a piece of poo-poo. <laughs> yeah, I did a poo-poo thing. Look at Ahmed. He's so cute. Oh, oh what, what's, what's the cat's name again? Armin. 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 Uh, Armin's getting bigger, too. I remember when Armin was just a kitten. Yeah, yeah, he's getting big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then the cat he's goes, under your the, the cat goes crazy. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to stick up. I'm going to go upstairs onto my office. No, you're going to go oh, up to the sure. office, but you, you were showing us your arts and crafts here. Yeah, I'm done now, so yeah. I'm going to go to my office. It's very good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, be right well, back. Okay. We'll see you when you're upstairs. Um, yeah. Daddy. Yeah. She uh, weekly turns us off. Oh, Daddy. Sorry. Yeah. Well, there we go. He's off. Okay. Um, that is that is one of the cutest kids. She is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Alex, can I sneak something in? What? Do you, you know who a guy named Robert Gordon is, right? The singer. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I heard that he uh, did something on Midnight Blue. Like, do you remember what it was or something? He didn't do anything on Midnight Blue. Oh, all right. Because I, I don't know. I'll have to find out what it is. And, but I know I'm so glad you know who he is because he passed away. And I've been running around all over and nobody knows who Robert Gordon is. You know, no, he had, a, he had like one major hit. And I'm trying to remember right. which one. What was it called? Do you remember? Black Slacks. No. Black, number one, I don't know, but no, he no, collaborated no. with Bruce Springsteen, and uh, he did Fire, which Bruce Springsteen no, wrote. Robert Gordon? He, it's not he the, was Rockabilly, though. Rockabilly, right? It's not the Robert Gordon I'm used to. Hold on a second. Oh, you Robert think of another one? Gordon. Uh, yeah, if you see the picture, you'll know, maybe. He had, like, a pompadour hairdo, like a Rockabilly, 50s yeah, guy. Yeah, like. yeah. Robert Gordon like, dies. Took rockabilly to the punk scene. Uh, I don't know if I remember him. Maybe I'm not. I'm thinking of somebody else. Yeah, but uh, he wasn't really that big, really. You know. Yeah. He never, like you know, the Ramones. They say should have been a lot, gotten more fame than they did. Yeah. He was like that, very underground. You know, not no nobody. He wore a black leather jacket and. He, um, you know, black. He was a rockabilly guy. So people can see what I'm, uh, what, uh, what we're, yeah. uh, what we're talking about he had a great here. Look, though. Um, let me just uh, do this. There, there's a for everybody. There, that's Robert Gordon. Um, oh, okay. So I'm, I'm just playing it back for the people out there watching yeah. the show. But uh, that's Robert Gordon. Okay. Yeah. He. Um, so he's gone. Well, they're all going. You know, I know. Like, you know. Uh, remember you used to do the people who died? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I do. I, 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 You know, I have my Alexa here. And whenever I'm watching somebody and I go, I wonder if they're still alive. Mm-hmm. And Alex, oh, sorry. I thought Angela Lansbury was dead when I heard she died. <laughs> Isn't that terrible when people Well, there dead? are people you think were dead because they're yeah, so old yeah. that you go, they should be dead. Mm. You know, like when people see me on this show, they go, he's still alive? Oh, like uh, uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Well, yeah, <laughs> kind of kind of like, uh, like Alex Bennett uh, Gilbert. is still alive? <laughs> yeah, wait a minute, hold on a second. Where is it? Uh, well, oh, here we go. Alex Bennett is still alive? Yeah, yeah I, there I, we I, go. <laughs> but it's funny, Gilbert isn't. I know, yeah. Of course, nothing funny about that, but. You know, I miss. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm walking down Fifth Avenue one day on the other side of the street. I hear this sound. Alex Bennett is still alive. And it's it's <laughs> it's it's uh, Gilbert. Wherever whenever I hear from him, meet him, or see him, or talk to him, that's what would happen. So you know, that was our our thing. Oh, so anyway, yeah. So I'm trying to think if there's anything worth talking about. Well, if uh, Brian comes back, 
I have some wine in his birth year. You have some wine in his birth year. In 1976, yes. Yeah. Mm. Four bottles of a uh, Sauterne, a French dessert wine. Yeah. You know what? I've been playing these video games, and when I play the video games for, you know, I I can be suddenly be playing them for two hours and not know the two hours have passed, right? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I am then I get up. I am just woozy. I cannot. <laughs> I I'm stumbling and everything, right? Positional. Positional something. Vertigo. Um, uh, vertigo, right, right. That's what I have, yeah. Because you got your head looking down and then you look up. Well, no, but it's not that. It's that the screen, everything's going like this, right? Oh, really? And I suddenly noticed today there is a feature on the game where I can set it for less motion sickness. So I'm going to have to. You can with your iPhone, too. Huh? You can? There's there... a setting in the iPhone, yes. Oh, really? Yep, yep, yep. I, I just, I'm having problems with my iPhone, and so Apple was nice enough to wipe out all my settings for me. <laughs> I'll find it. Just keep going, and I'll, I'll let you know where it's at in a minute. Alex, that's good to know. I, you know, like my son does that a lot. I bet, you know, because it's not good, like flashing lights. No good. Well, it isn't the flashing lights. I mean, it depends. If you if you have uh, uh, what do you call it? epilepsy, you don't want flashing lights. But if you don't have epilepsy, I'm not bothered by the flashing lights. But it's the movement, it's the motion. I'm mean, I'm zipping around and and um, um, just from lying down. And then of course, one of the worst things about positional vertigo is when you get up. Okay, uh, from lying down. You have to sit there. I have to sit there for about a minute. Are you are you playing these on a tablet or, or what? I'm playing these on my new PS5. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know much about that. Anyhow, Listen, I paid enough this. money for it. I want to brag about it. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Um, anyhow, on the iPhone, if you go into settings, accessibility, there's a little uh, green thing. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't get that way from looking at my iPhone, but where is it? Music Settings, device. and then what does it say under accessibility? Accessibility. Let's see then, here. Wait, oh, accessibility, there it is. And it says motion. Well, let's see here. Oh, motion. And then and it then says reduce work. motion, reduce the, oh, well, it, 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 the motion, the user interface, okay. Okay, so if I reduce motion, what happens? Uh, well, when you move the phone around, I, I don't know. I've ne I didn't turn it on. Well, let me see here. Let me see here. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem to change anything. Well, probably maybe when you go into something that has motion, like a game or something on your iPhone. Mm hmm Oh, I see what it does. Okay. See, normally, if you take this phone, right, and you, you move this up, it should just move this out of the way, but instead of doing that, it, I have to, um, I have to, um, oh, here we go. I, I, I can't, I can't have it that way because what it does is now I can get rid of it, see, by, by going, you know, when you take the bottom and you push it up in yep. order to get, yeah, it doesn't do that. That's what it prevents from happening. Well, I don't get too terribly dizzy from that, okay? Um, so I'm not worried about that. Hello, Kevin. How are you this evening? Oh, same as I was last night. Tired. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, but uh, I'm doing a show nonetheless. I'm trying it tonight. Uh, yeah, thank you, Alex. What? <laughs> thank you for doing the show. No, well, don't thank me. You know, I, Spend money. You know. Um, you got me all excited. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm calling in to yeah. support. You know, because Tuesday or was it Tuesday? Mm -hmm. I thought it was Wednesday. And when you weren't on, I said, "Oh my God, he's serious. He quit the show and he's not on." I got excited. Was well, I, I was very close to it, and then Kevin and and uh, Josh mm -hmm. came along and said, "Do a show on Friday. Just do it like we do our Saturday stuff." So I broadcast it on uh, on Facebook, and it, you know it was it was Kevin, uh, Josh, and I, and 
this guy that we have from Canada that calls the Monday show who was walking around New York so we thought that, that was interesting and it was uh, it was watched by more people by by at least two and a half times the people that are probably gonna watch this tonight you know so again I wonder why I'm doing this you know uh, with all the bells and whistles and the opening theme and all of that when I can just go there we are on Facebook you know. mm. why don't you do Thursdays for interviewing Adrian why? Maybe you'll get kids that'll want to watch your show. <laughs> why don't we? All the, all the, all the nine why don't we do Thursdays without you? How's that? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> here comes Brian. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Yeah. I. Um, oh, the, the, oh, he's got his. Uh, he's got a take his thing off so we can see him there we, there we were go were you listening to the show huh were you listening to the show while you were off video no so you were born in 1976 no no 1967 oh never mind really <laughs> I got four bottles of French uh, wine in that were made in 76 somehow Alan, that's the year I graduated high school. Does that count? <laughs> when you come out, we'll drink one, Charlene. Oh, boy. 70, I don't think I'm going to get over there. That's also another good year for uh, Sauterne. French dessert wine. Oh, boy. Okay. That's exciting. Yeah, that's exciting. And, and Kevin's tired, and I'm loopy, and uh, Jeff, Jeff looks okay. I'm okay today. Yeah. He doesn't look like a guy who had a stroke. You know. Well, you know, I, I, cars while he was a kid. Hmm? I found out a little bit about stroke business these days. About the stroke business? Is there a business of strokes? Yeah, it's called uh, some kind of surgery. But anyway, uh, neurosurgery. And I heard this neurosurgeon talking on the radio. And here's what the deal is. It's totally different than when I had it done. And what it is, they've done the whole thing, what we call less invasive or minimally. Yeah, minimally invasive, invasive yeah. And what they used to do is make a big saw <laughs> right through your head so they could oh. open up and then they'd look inside and see what they could find and then fix it, okay? What they do now is they put uh, a scope through your nose. Through your nose, yeah. Yeah, miniature stuff. And then they look around and they actually think they do some instrumentation or whatever, and they find out where the bad spot is that they spot. Mm -hmm. that they really have to work on. And while they're in there, can they kind of like wipe out the memory of your prom? I don't know. <laughs> you know. I don't know. Something like that. What, what, what happens, Alex, when that camera goes up there and there's like no, nothing there from your 60s and 70s? <laughs> the blowout. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. no sinus up here. It's just a big echo. <laughs> you know, the thing is, no I've told, I told this story before. My father died of a pituitary tumor, mm, uh, which a pituitary is if you go here yeah, and then you go straight down yeah. where they intersect, that's where the pituitary is. And if you get a tumor on your pituitary in those days, it was almost impossible to operate on without leaving some residual negative stuff, you know. Uh, sometimes they could do it and it wouldn't be a problem. But uh, my father died of it because they didn't want to, they weren't sure that's what it was and they didn't want to try it because they didn't know. And this was the Kaiser, so they, you know, they, they were supposedly in advance, had the most advanced stuff going. Well, about, I don't know, maybe 10 years later. I'm dating this woman, and she said, you know, I was in bad shape a couple of years ago, and I said, why? She said, I had a pituitary tumor. I said, my God, my father died of a pituitary tumor. How did you survive? She says, oh, it's nothing now. They put you out. They go up, they go up through your, no, through your mouth. And then they go up into the brain, do remove the tumor, and, you know, laparoscopically. 
just and and I and I went, you know, my father, if he had just lived another five years or so, would still be alive. Well, not today, but you know. So I lost him early because of the damn pituitary tumor. Fifty nine he was, you know. Oh boy. Yeah. That's yeah. Alex, yeah. And, and I love my father. I was crazy about him, you know, so it was a real loss for me. But that's what happens. I mean, they can do stuff today. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't think that science has gotten better, but actually it really has. But mm -hmm. it's by small little footsteps, you know. But then over years and years and years, like I'm 82 now, a lot of stuff has been, you know, taken care of. My prostate cancer would have been a death uh, sentence several years ago. Now, you know. If you go back 50 years in cardiology, I was just watching stuff. They didn't have the angiogram, angioplasty. If you had a clogged artery, they did open heart surgery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the... In, in the 60s and early 70s is when heart medicine the lower your blood pressure came out mm -hmm. so well we, also you think, you think about that. also what is it the statins mm -hmm. they say yep. that I, i've had doctors who've said that they put their kids on statins that people should be on statins from the time they're teenagers because it is that good at preventing clogged arteries you know mm -hmm. yes uh yes charlene Okay, I think I'm going to Ben's waiting room now, but my doctor put me on a beta blocker uh, instead of like a, a blood pressure pill. And I was trying to look it up and Google it and everything. You know, Dr. Bennett, do you know about a beta blocker? I, I, the only thing I know about beta blockers is they once gave me a beta blocker. Well, it wasn't really what you're thinking of. It, they were preventing me from getting an advanced copy of the latest MS-DOS. <laughs> so... See, beta, so beta blocker. blocker, you like that? Blocker. That's a good technical <laughs> joke, beta right, blocker. Like yeah, yeah, beta blockers were one of the first blood pressure medicines. <clears throat> they, they can slow your heart rate down with the beta blocker. Yeah, that, I remember now when I Googled it. Yeah. Because my cardiologist did that. He gave me a beta blocker. <laughs> alpha beta? Remember alpha beta? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, the food store. Yeah, the food store. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are they not around anymore? Are they? No, I don't think so. I think they used to have the commercial. They had like a parrot there saying Alpha Beta. Yeah. Well, you know what's going away. I think. I think a lot of things are going away. I mean, uh, I. I don't. You know, like you. There's no reason for Sears Roebuck anymore, is there? No. No reason for a Montgomery Ward. No. You know, you don't need a Radio Shack. Or you. You've got the Amazon. Anything you want, you can buy on Amazon. Yeah, and I think that the you know Lowe's, well, so so home improvement stores, I think, are still thriving because that stuff you want right away. You know, you're on a Saturday morning, you want to do your garden or something. So, so those things thrive for sure. But yeah, everything else. But if you, you if it's something day. you can wait a day for. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's all you need to wait. And it's too easy. How many clicks does it take? If you go on to Amazon right now mm -hmm. and you search for something, how many clicks is it until it's it's shipping? I mean, I, I just got a couple other thumb drives and it was like two clicks. I searched for what I wanted. I clicked on it, said buy now, and I clicked one more, and then it said it's shipped. You know, it's already That's processed. Right. I ordered my, my, yeah, my I, I ordered I ordered my PS5, which is one of the <laughs> hardest uh, – hardest things to get these days um uh at four o'clock one day it was here at noon the next day that's pretty fast just delivered here about five ten minutes ago huh they just delivered here about five or ten minutes ago something i ordered yesterday yeah yeah i mean it's eight forty-five here almost shecky said some stuff he's ordered he's actually gotten the same day yeah yeah. If you're close enough to the distribution center. If you're a prime member, you do that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then I want to order, uh, like, some creamer, right? You know, because I use this creamer in my coffee. And all they have was the Carmel this time. But anyway, I got the creamer. And if I wanted to get another kind of creamer, it wasn't going to be able to be delivered for three weeks. <laughs> and I'm going, what happened to overnight? You know? Yeah. But then other stuff, like the PS5, I get 
like within 24 hours. Within 24 hours. No. And now, do you, do you get this thing with Amazon where they put on there when you say, where where's my stuff and, you know, when, when's the delivery supposed to be and all of that? And they give you a map and it shows you where the guy is? And so he's yeah, like five just, stops yeah. away, he's three stops away, he's four stops yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. Logistics, Alex, right? The logistics, like where yeah. he is. Yeah. Yeah, say, yeah, I get that. Uh, the notifications. Yeah, he says 10 stops away. Yeah. Jeez, I'm at work. I don't need to know that detail. <laughs> so. And then they yeah. still deliver it to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm amazed. But I'm amazed at how fast these things uh, are. They're doing these things. Yeah. But that, a, I don't know. Do you order from anything but Amazon? Is there anything but Amazon? No. I mean, has anybody really tried to compete with them? Or is it just that they were so far ahead of their time that they got everything, they got this whole backlog of stuff that they had in the logistics to do it, and that there's no company that could start up tomorrow and have that kind of depth? I wonder how many pieces of inventory, not, not individual, but like part numbers they have. Oh, yeah. And how they do it all. I mean, how they get, get these things packed and shipped. And well, they, don't, they don't warehouse everything. A lot of stuff say like for some Ford parts for your car they 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 have different Ford dealers that connect with them and they never touch them yeah they're tied they're tied to suppliers right does anybody yeah. here use instacart no no Pam says yes I don't know what it is okay you you all know what instacart is right it's this service yeah. well I, when I, we, we when, do. <laughs> when it came into its own during covid and we found it and started using it because we didn't want to go to Costco. You know, we didn't mm -hmm. want to take our life in our hands by going to Costco. Mm -hmm. So we would order through Instacart. And when they first started, it was a little dicey, you know. But as it's gone on, they become such a big company that they're now very sophisticated. And uh, we still get all our stuff through. We, Marjorie does all her shopping through Instacart. Whether it's Stu Leonard's up in Westchester, or whether it's uh, Costco down the street, I uh, we use them, and they're they're pretty amazing now, and uh, they, uh, uh, and it gets here within a couple hours. You know, we don't have so to go does over it there. Cost a lot more to go to Costco and have them deliver it, or as compared to. Well, it cost me $100 a year for the service. Okay. Otherwise, there's no real extra charges for them doing it. I have to tip the guy, but it would cost me $15 in a lift. Hmm, I got a hair. Hold on a second. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but did Damn they give you samples? Well, wait a minute. Wait, no, <laughs> you don't get that. <laughs> right. We pick up a couple of the samples too for me while. Yeah. Please, but yes. anyway, they. they um, they, uh, the, I tipped the guy about 20 bucks, the person about 20 bucks, um, which is more than usually than it says I have to uh, or that I should. Uh, but the thing is, it would cost me 15 bucks to get there by lift and another 10 bucks to get back. And it's 25 bucks, so if I, I'm, I, I'll give the guy a, a tip that's the equivalent of what it would cost me to take a cab to get there in the first place. Yeah. So, you know. And, uh, you know, so I, I uh, uh, but it caught, uh, Instacart has been a, been a godsend. Occasionally they screw up and, you know, there are a few problems. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's another company that has come out as a result of all this. I'll tell you a company I'm getting really pissed at is Netflix. Um, to begin with, they're kind of, what are they? They're the cheap-ass HBO, right? <laughs> HBO d does things with quality, and 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 Netflix does it uh, in a foreign language. You know, I mean, it's just I. But the thing I hate about Netflix is now, by the way, in the la they lost like about two hundred thousand, two two hundred thousand, yeah, two hundred thousand uh, 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 subscribers, yeah. and, and then all of a sudden they got them back during this last quarter. 
Okay. So as soon as they lost them, they suddenly said, oh, we're going to cut back on our production, and we're going to cut back on this, and we're going to, you know, they make, do you know how much they make a year? $222 billion. Is it billion? billion? Revenue. Yeah. Is it billion? Wow, am I, am I right when I say yeah. billion? Yeah, it's got to be billion. Yeah. Because yeah, million. Is one guy working? Or? Yeah. 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 <laughs> $222 billion. And uh, Disney is $150 billion a year in subscribers. Wow. All right? So all of a sudden, you're going to get cheap, and you're still making like $200 billion? Mm. I, think, I think it was billion. It can't be a million, because that would be maybe, too little. Maybe. Uh, let me check. Yeah, I think it's $220 billion. But, I mean, don't get, don't get cheap. Don't cheap sheet me for crying out loud. Look how much money you're making. Mm. Don't stop paying people to produce shows because, you know, God forbid you went down 200 million subscribers. So? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they say 30, 30 billion. 30 billion? 20, 2021 revenue was 30 billion U.S. dollars. Yeah. What? For, Still, that, that's, oh, that's, no, that's, that's U.S. That's, revenue. I'm talking about worldwide. Yeah. Uh, yes, Charlene. Um. Uh, maybe it went up again, though, Alex. Because did you know, like Dahmer was the number one show that was watched like all over the world or something? Because I've been watching that, like the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. I, refu know, but, I refuse to watch it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, then now it's that other thing, The Watcher. That's supposed to be the. Yeah, well, I, well, we watched that. What'd you think of that one? Uh, I hated it. Yeah, me too. Probably. I hated it because by the time it was through, it's a sucker's bet. It never really resolves itself. Yeah, I'd rather see Amityville Horror than that. Let's see. Netflix, Netflix uh, uh, sub <laughs> subscribers. Netflix makes about $1.4 million a day. Wow. That's a lot of money a day. Okay. Wow. Okay. Netflix made, uh, oh, 200, 229. Okay, 29. Uh, $29,698,000,000 in revenue in 2021. Um, still, that's a lot of money. All right? That, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. so if you lost yourself to 200,000 subscribers, what are you griping about? You know? I mean, Peacock is sitting over there with 13 million or something. <laughs> not, a very, not a lot. Disney has a two, at 150 million, and it was 220 million subscribers mm. at Netflix for a total of whatever this amount is. Yeah. But I mean, and now, okay, I, to begin with, I, was, I went all the way. I got their 4K service. It was costing me 20 bucks a month. Mm. So I said, screw it, I'll go down to their HD service. And it's 15 bucks a month. And you know something? I can't tell the difference. <laughs> they say most people cannot tell the difference between 4K and 1080p. Mm -hmm. That you know, there's a there's a point at which most eyes do not see the difference. Mm. Uh, and so I was very glad to do that. But how dare you charge me five dollars more when all the others, Disney, HBO Max, Peacock, all of them, 4K is free. Well, it's not free, but it's not an extra charge. And that now what they're going to do is they're going to they're going only let you use subscribers in your home. If you want someone else to be on your subscription, you're going to have to pay another five bucks a month. And I'm going, if I'm paying that twenty dollars for that four K service, you can fucking kiss my ass and let me have eighty people on it if I want to, you know, mm -hmm. but. They're just getting cheap with us, you know, and they're getting greedy. And it's uh, it's sad. It's really sad. And, you know, and, and Netflix stuff isn't that good. You know, I didn't watch the Dahmer thing, but The Watcher, we watched the whole thing, thinking there was going to be some kind of resolution to it, and we were just really Netflix suckers. Mm -hmm. That's how it turned out. Do you find that true, Kevin? You, you have Netflix, don't you? Yeah. What do you think of it? Eh, you know, I don't watch it enough to let it bother me. Uh -huh. 
What are the other uh, services do you have? Uh, HBO Max and uh, Amazon Video. Okay, HBO uh, Max. Yeah. Amazon Video you get because you're an Amazon subscriber. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I have Paramount Plus, which I like because I now get Showtime with it. Okay. And uh, what, did, what is the other one that I have? Uh, I have Apple TV. I don't know why, you know. Yeah, I got Apple TV too, and it, it just sits there. It, yeah, it, it's cheap enough, you know. Hulu. Uh, Hulu, I love. I think Hulu is so much better than Netflix. And and I, I get it in a bundle with Disney. So, you know, yes, Charlene. Do you watch The Kardashians? instead of keeping up with? I, I, I watched the first couple of the new ones, and I don't know why, but I just didn't stick with it. I'm, I'm, st I'm tired of that phony drama that goes on in their lives. She's gonna yeah. have, Chris is gonna have hip surgery. Yeah. That's the next hip thing. Surgery. <laughs> you know. I might go back to watching it if, if Kanye is on it. You know, because mm -hmm. I just want to hear him be anti-Semitic. It's fun. Oh, what did he do now, Alex? He did something again today. I think he uh, today did. he does something every day. Yeah, something really stupid. Yeah, but no, he uh, he hates Jews. Mm, that's... You know. Okay, well that's fine. You know, watch me. You'll have a good reason to. You know. <laughs> uh, you'll you'll have justification. Uh, I think Howard Stern today said he was no better than Hitler. Uh, you know, he's, he, he may have screwed up this time. He may have yep. overplayed his popularity, but somebody was saying on TMZ, and they're right, he could act up all he wants, but as long as he puts out music people want to hear, he's going to be in business. Alex, though, I don't think he's done that in years, like his yeah. music. Nobody cares, and he hasn't even done anything. Well, you, you remember successful. the whole thing that screwed up Kevin Spacey, which mm. was the kid... Uh, this guy, Anthony Rapp, who's on uh, Star Trek Discovery, who said that mm -hmm. when he was 14, um, Spacey raped him in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. So he then sued Spacey, and they went to court, and today the court came back with their verdict that Spacey is not guilty. Mm. Nothing went on. There that was, was an offensive piece. Huh? Yeah. That was yeah. I almost just said that. I'm glad you brought it up, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I, I I don't think that'll vindicate him. He's still got, you know, they char really? they've charged him with stuff in England, and there are a few other cases going on, too. And it ruined his career, right? But it ruined his career. I mean, forget it. If he gets exonerated from all this stuff, uh, it's, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to uh, be the same as it was, mm -hmm. you know. He'll never he'll, he'll never work again. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and oh and by the way they just started shooting again, the Alec Baldwin movie where the woman got shot. Oh, I wondered about that, Alex. They're gonna finish Rust. it. You know how they got past it? The family went for it because the fa the husband has become an executive producer on the movie. Uh, how does that happen? I don't understand. Well, they bought him off. Money. They bought them off. off. Yeah, money. They no, 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 no. I understand that. I say, I, how do how do they have a live gun on on a movie set? I you know understand. something? These things happen because people aren't doing their job. You know. We we have a person twist the ankle, and we got to stop everything for a day, <laughs> find right? out why, put put countermeasures in there, a and root cause, countermeasures. Immediately. I, well, exactly. well, my question yeah. is, why do you, why do you have live ammunition in the gun anyway, or even a dummy ammunition in the gun? All you have to do is point it, go click, and then later on, when you're making the you, mm -hmm. editing the movie, you put in bang. They you said know? That there was a shooting range nearby because you know it was like in the western, like, like, like deserted area. So they said there was a shooting range around there. Some of the guys were taking those guns and going shooting them. It's like well, you see, the thing is, they to check them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they shouldn't exactly. even be able to shoot a bullet. There's yeah, no exactly. reason to shoot a bullet with them. Like, you can put the sound in afterwards. Yep. You know, and you yep. can you can have the actor kind of do the recoil. You know, yep. and you're done. I I would never allow a live ammunition, a live gun on my set. 
Yes, quickly, Charlene. No, I just want to. Uh, is he exonerated, Alex Baldwin, for that, or, or are they still? Well, they're him? still looking into criminal okay. charges. On the, yeah. uh, you know. After he signed the check, they won't. That well, no, right. but there's the local police as well who are investigating. Uh, the dream it. team too. Really? What? The dream team number two. He's got expensive lawyers that'll get him out of it. Well, I, I I don't know if that's the case. I mean, I think he just wants to get on with it. You know, that movie was never supposed to be released in the United States. Really? It's that cheap a movie. And so uh, they're going to go back to shooting it, and it's never even, you're never even going to be able to see it, you know, so whatever. Anyway. Hey, there's a theme. Oh, it's over. Oh. It's over. Thank God. It, every night, the one thing that happens to this show that just wells my heart up with joy is that it's I over. Survived, it's over. I survived Thursday Thank on you. the Ramble. On the it Ramble, and, and it turned Thursday out to be we had one of my favorite we, days. Yeah, we had a we had a nice group of people here, and it's fine, and you know, but uh, Jack will be doing his little thing next. So if some of you want to slop over there and you know have Has a good call, you for technical advice today? Uh, huh? No, no, no. Uh, and I ain't answering my phone. How's that? <laughs> you know, anyway, uh, let's say good night to Jeff. Jeff, thank Can you I for being you. here. Always wonderful to have you here. Uh, and uh, uh, and Alan, nice having you here. Charlene, good to see you. Uh, uh, Kevin, uh, bye bye. And bye -bye. of course, uh, uh, our our good friend uh, Brian, uh, who is doing birthday baskets or uh, <laughs> for the whole class. It's the it's the answer to the question of. Uh, you're chewing gum. Did you bring enough for everybody? Well, that's what you were doing today. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. And see? My my thing worked finally. Didn't work at the beginning of the show, sorry. Anyway, we, you know, it wasn't bad. You know, it could be terrible, but it wasn't. So, anyway, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. And he will be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night.